Hello, today we're opening the book on another persona in the new indie in the year 2019. I hope everyone had a good New Year's and a good Christmas, by the way. But anywho, today we are going to be talking about Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight and Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. Now, I got the Endless Night Collection. Now, normally, I would talk about these two games separately. However, there was a good reason I'm not going to. And, well, we're going to go into that. So, first thing, these all sold separately for full price. $60, $59.99. Or you can get the Endless Night Collection. Now, I still had my Best Buy 20% off. So, I used that and got 20% off the Endless Night Collection. Now, the Endless Night Collection also, notably, to just uh, make sure um, I'm fully clear. Uh, the Endless Night also comes with Persona 4 Dancing All Night. A digital PS4 version. Which, as far as I'm aware, is still not available for purchase. Which is a bit odd, considering they took the time to port to the PS4, which was originally a Vita-only game. And this is on Vita and PS4. Now, in America, we only got physical versions of PS4, so if you want the Vita versions, you have to go digital or import. Um, I do believe Japan did get physical versions of the Vita, I believe. And interestingly enough, the PS4 version has a VR mode. We will go into that too. So, let's go into the good and the bad. I got good and bad things to say that. So, and uh, controversial things to go into. Now, on the plus side, um, there aren't really straight out spoilers for either game going out too much. But if you are familiar with the two game storylines, you will find that the P3 cast is near the end of their journey, and the P5 cast are done with their journey. So, the games take place in those times, and it, the, the quote-unquote story is that the Velvet Womb residents of the P3 cast and P5 cast, um... Talking with the Velvet Womb guest, uh, uh, was the Velvet Womb resident of P4, and grew jealous of the tale of dancing all night, and decided to put their oh, um, protagonists against each other in a dance off to see who was the best ever. Kind of a strange little plot. Now, as far as I'm aware of, it is non-canon, so I would not take it uh, too seriously. Now, uh, as the reason I would say quotations story, unlike Persona 4 Dancing All Night, that had a full-blown canon story that would take you some time to get through with lengthy visual novel segments with the dancing segments thrown in as the battles and challenges of the game. Um, that is stripped out of these two games. You instead get this light story. Diet Light. Basically, it's a social link mode with the cast and characters. And you simply just have to play the game. Different things will unlock new tiers. Playing so many songs, trying on different new costumes, doing songs, using combo modifiers that either increase or decrease the difficulty of the songs. Each social link has a different thing that affects unlocking each tier of it. And getting that allows you to experience a little scene with that character in that. Um, while these scenes are enjoyable, uh, personally I really enjoyed the ones in Persona 5 quite a lot more than Persona 3's. Uh, Persona 3's wasn't enjoyable too, but Something seems a little odd considering, like, if you're familiar with Persona 3, you know, the world's in the imminent danger near the Italian extinction of humanity, so, uh, kind of really up to okay. happy thing is seems a little out of place to me. 
Now, I personally viewed the social link change from the full-blown story as a negative. Like, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's a downgrade to me. It's ha it's my same argument going from Super Smash Bros. Brawl to full Wii U. Like, they removed stuff. You're supposed to be adding and making stuff better. Now, there is a debate on which is better. Because one, what I mentioned as drama is, there is a significant piece of the fan base that viewed all, Dancing All Night story mode as kind of just... Uh, what's the term I'm thinking of? Just kind of waddled in for pointlessness to go with the dancing and music theme and that. And I think it kind of works to me because, you know, it, it has to do with the cognition world. So I, I could see if something powerful enough was able to uh, present a cognition like that. I, I could see that being a thing. But that was just m how I interpreted why dancing and stuff, fighting. Um... But people who criticized the story mode in Persona 4 seemed to really reacted much positive though, to the social link uh, system, actually enjoying the you know, and like I said, the interactions all pretty good. I specifically think the Persona 5 ones are much better than the Persona 3 ones, but they're still enjoyable if you like the cast members. You get to hang out with your favorite characters and maybe your not so favorite characters, but um. I still consider it downgrade. It has some enjoyment in it, especially depending on which characters you really like and how many of them you really liked, but it's just nowhere close to how much content the story mode in Dancing All Night is. So, if you didn't like how the story was in Dancing All Night, you might enjoy the social link system more, but... I think it's a bit lacking, especially when these are two separate games, and I'll go into what I think would have made this work a lot better when I go through all the different things, so. Um, Dancing All Night also had the Tanaka shop being network channel. Which, if you're familiar with Tanaka, he was a social link in Persona 3. He ran the television um, sell, selling network channel thing on Persona 3 and 4. And then he um, appears again running a online store in Persona 5 if you fix the broken laptop. And I really thought it was such a shame they took the Tanaka shop away. I liked the idea that you got like a certain amount of cash depending on how well you did on the song. And you could use that to buy accessories and things. And you still had certain things that were locked behind needing to like complete the story and do a few certain things. To get a few special goodies to be unlocked to buy. I liked it how... It presented that. I think there was a lot of style in it. Um, in the Moonlight and Starlight, you just simply either have to complete certain tasks, or specifically, well, most of like 80% of everything comes from the social links. Most of the social links will unlock certain sets of gear and stuff. So. You just send, you just essentially do the social links, and then you just you get all the stuff that way. I liked it the Tanaka way much better. I think it was a much nicer little presentation to the whole thing, but that's not an end of the world thing. I just thought as a presentation, it just seemed a little odd. On the upside, if you buy the DLC, you do get Tanaka song, which kind of sad that there wasn't one in the P3 game with it. Song-wise, um, there's like, I think it's either by one or two songs less than Dancing All Night, which seems like another negative to me. Now, it's not, like I said, a huge amount. I, I think it was like two songs less than Dancing All Night, which again has a big story mode. Now, that was one of my complaints with Dancing All Night. It didn't have a lot of songs, but the bloated big story, I thought, kinda gave a reason for that. 
Now, here's, here's the big controversy here. Now, you may remember a certain Fire Emblem game on the 3DS that was split up into pieces that really, like, helped make an overarching type of story and warning of different uh, factions and things. I kind of feel like that's the same thing going on here. Honestly, I think all of my criticisms, mostly, with the game, the bare bones of the games, would mostly be just gone if these two games were just one game. They would have a larger soundtrack, which was one of the things when they announced these. I said if they have more songs, I think that will fix one of my criticisms with the original game. And then they said there was going to be no story mode, and I said they need more songs then. Separating these two gave the two separate games less songs than Dancing All Night. No story mode gave less content in that regard. And in the end, it just leaves not as much to do, in my opinion, without buying the DLC. Which, there was a ton of DLC songs for this. And I also feel slightly more blunt, because I bought that DLC to make my stream a little more entertaining. Now, this is a positive for those who didn't buy it, that some of those became free, so, um, that's good. But that's, that's only for America. For some reason, in Europe, um, they did not get several free, freebies like America did after initial sales of the DLC packs. And even then, there's still a few individual killer song packs, like this one with Lapras, that's a separate 599, and then one with the Red Hail guy from Arena 2, that's 599, that's separate by itself that you have to get. It's just so much damn DLC. Like honestly, this is one of the most milkyish games Atlas did in the DLC department, in my opinion. It's a real shame because I really do like these games. They're not terrible music games. It just feels like there was a lot of, like, honestly, again, like I said, if they were just one thing, I feel like this would be a much more complete product. But instead, it feels like they split down the line, two separate $60 games, slap on tons and tons of DLC. It's just... Uh, because, I mean, imagine the two games together would be huge, huge track list. And both social links. Now, uh, to be fair, though, um, two characters from the P3 cast are not present. Because uh, one's because of story, and the other reason is because one of them's a dog. Now, I mean, you could argue they could have somehow fit... Poor, poor, poor little doggy boy. I, I can't remember how to pronounce his name again, damn it. I always forget how to say his name. But, um... They, they just skimped him out. I mean, in the Wiener game, in the Wiener 2, him and Ken were one, one team fighting thing. So, I, I kind of thought they would probably do something like that, but now he, he's just not present. So, two, two of the party members also skimped out of the P3 cast. Um, again, one of them's for a very, very major story reason because of when they've got plunked out. But, um, the other one, it just uh, didn't really give a reason at all, honestly. It's just like, oh, uh, he's not here. Whoop. But if you played Dancing All Night, it the only really new thing they brought in from uh, adding on to Dancing All Night was a special uh, double tap kind of note, which um, really didn't seem like a big thing to me. It just seemed like a regular note where they're just closer together. But um, they just did a little difference there when they were like really one after another like that. Um, a lot of the same mods appeal. There's a few extra little things, I think, that might have been a little different. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I remember a lot of these, like, making scratch notes count as misses and speed changing and that. Um, you can essentially make all night mode possible by spanning buttons by turning on all the easy mods on and that. So, 
again, uh, like Dancing All Night, I think there's a lot of options to make the game easier or harder. Like, seriously, you can make this so fucking nightmare inducing with the different kind of mods you can apply to a song. It can just get really insane and shit. Um, also, I do have to also mention, there is um, Pacific DLC with the Endless Night Collection where you get, um, ironically, one of the characters who's missing from the P3 cast, which, again, I say um, has a reason, and um, you will catch And they both come with a song, each with them, and those, as far as I'm aware, are not available uh, for purchase at all. They're only available in the Endless Night Collection currently at the making of this video. So that's two more songs with two more characters that will cut out just to be a bonus thing. Which is very odd. Now probably the most disappointing thing in this, because like I said, so far I just feel like they just did everything possible to get as much money out of this. But the thing that really is disappointing to me was the VR mode. Which is uh, one of the specific reasons uh, I was more leaning... Obviously, the f being physical was the other reason. Um, but to be honest, I would have considered importing the Japanese Vita versions if I knew the VR mode was going to be very lackluster. And um, it is. So, there's basically two things you can do with VR. You can explore, there are these segments later on in the social links where you can explore the character's wombs, which um, most of the P5 cast, you don't get to see the wombs, so it's kind of interesting to see some character's wombs. You can explore the wombs and look for little cards that the Velvet Womb uh, residents have hid that also unlock extra outfits and things. But um, you can actually use VR in these and explore the wombs. Um, it's pretty slow. It kind of makes me sick because there was um, a lot of taunting involved. I, I find at this point playing VR games that the more I have to fiddle around taunting like nudges more often as opposed to just being able to turn my head. Like, I think it works really well with Resident Evil 7 because you, you're taking more of your time being cautious and that. But, you know, you're just in a womb looking for this card and examining things, so... I And you only turn in nudges, so it, it makes me sick, personally. So I tried that out. I didn't do too many people's wombs that way. And I only did in P5. <laughs> the only other thing you can do in VR is look at uh, Kyoto models. And they have four poses. One pose that's animated that cycles through a small cycle and then three that stand still and when you view these models in VR mode it's in this cube with way lights and that surrounding you and that's it it's nothing really special at all so the VR mode is very disappointing to be honest now Probably for the most important thing to know, because these these are good music games. It's just, to me, they feel like a downgrade from the original game because they scrapped having a full-blown story, and they split it into two. And I honestly feel like this should have been one game, like how the Endless Night Collection presents it, versus being two separate games. But... The thing that's going to be the most important for people who like music games is the music, of course. So, in the Endless Night Collection, the normal version of Will and the normal version of the Battle for Everyone's Souls is what's held hostage in the Endless Night Collection. The original version. You do get a remix version of Battle for Everyone's Souls in um, in uh, Persona 3, and you also get that happy, happy go happy ish sounding one versus the actual bass, the boss battle thing. And you do get a remix version of Will, which actually sounds really good in P5. Um, so if you get the standard version separately, those are two songs you will automatically miss out. Um, will might be a little debatable, but how in the hell do you not pack the original version of the Battle for Everyone's Soul, like one of the best fucking songs in B3? 
Like, how do you do that? <laughs> but besides the original songs, you got the Wii mixes. Now, there were some Wii mixes that were okay. I liked that um, Snowflake one that uh, Yukiko danced to and Dancing All Night. That's like my favorite Wii mix in the um, Dancing All Night. But um, I feel like P3, Persona 3, there was a lot more attention to their Wii mixes than Persona 5's. Like, like Blooming Villains Wii mix. Like, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It's one of my favorite songs in Persona 5. Wivels, uh, Wivels in a Dry Land. And Blooming Villain are like two of my favorite. Will's a really good one too. Um, but I don't know. I didn't like many of the Wii mixes in Persona 5 versus P Persona 3. Now, obviously, that's very subjective of that. But in the end, I really did. I did enjoy the Wivels, Wivels in the Dry Land uh, Wii mix. That one was really good. You get that one way at the start too. So that's. Probably my best uh, favorite Wii Mix in Persona 5 side. But, um. Though there was, um. What was it? I think it was. I think it was the Wii Mix of Mass Destruction that sounded awful. Yeah! I think it was the Wii Mix of Mass Destruction P3 that I think was the worst on that side. Of that. But, overall, there was a pretty good song selection. There was a lot of weird shady shit when it comes to the DLC though. For example, um, you have an anime song opening for both these games. At the end of the game, you'll unlock both versions, P3 and P5, on both sides. Now, those extended long full version of the opening songs available as DLC. That seems really odd to me. Like, some of the DLC songs, I'm just kind of like... Like, I understand games that... The music that's associated with Persona 3 and 5, I don't think should have been any kind of DLC. Now, obviously, songs from Arena 1, Arena 2, Persona 4, or anything, which I still feel like is a huge missed opportunity. They didn't touch Persona 1, Persona 2, Persona Other 2. They didn't touch any of those. You do have options for Arena, Arena 2, Q. Also, kind of miss opportunity to throw, because I think Persona Q2 is out in Japan now, ain't it? So, you know, they could have uh, used it as a little springboard to get people excited in America, or if it hasn't came out yet, it still could have used it as a springboard to get a little excitement and awareness for Q2. But I, I just... I feel like there were some really odd choices in this. Separating, like, they, because the build, they were made at the same time. Um, they all connected to each other through the overarching storyline of being a dance off between the two teams. And it, it, it's just. At the end of the day, it just feels. It leaves a bad taste of whip off in my mouth. Um, it's because I, I think I think the full price was either eighty nine or ninety nine dollars for the endless night. Like I said, I got twenty dollars, uh, not twenty dollars off, but I mean I'm twenty percent off the tag because of the twenty percent thing at Best Buy. But even then, it just feels. And I bought the damn DLC season pack thing and. It's just, I don't know, it's just, I like them, but I honestly just would have loved it so much better and feel so more positive about if they were just one game for $60. But that is really my overarching thoughts on it. If you like music with them games and you love either Persona 3, Persona 5, or both of them, I would say check them out. But if you feel like there's any validity to my criticism, you could wait for a drop in the price on the standard versions. I don't know if the Endless Night Collection will ever drop any, or it might even get sold out, possibly. 
So that's a tough little decision that's a little hard to recommend too. Now, to be fair, I always had so for Dancing All Night on the Vita, so that to me wasn't a thing, especially since it's a digital only. But if you haven't played that, or you don't have it, and you don't mind being digital, adding that on top, that's three games. Two you get physical and one as a digital, and that in that regard, it's not a bad price in that way if you don't mind the digital version of one of the games. But to me, it's just, I feel a little customable. Not the kind that Fallout 76 gave, for oh, certainly, certainly nothing to that extent. <laughs> That's a whole different can of worms there, but um, I do feel a little bond on this, so. Um, I did enjoy them, and as one little thing, if you're a big trophy hunter, I'm not a really big trophy hunter. I always say that I just like trophies to add, like, usually like a goofy list of things to encourage more play, or trying out things, or figuring out silly secrets, or things like that. I enjoy trophies like that, but these are some of the easiest fucking trophies I've ever seen in my life for the fucking PS4. Like, seriously. I am platinum in both of them. They are super easy. Like, seriously. Even if you're bad at music rhythm games, like, you'd have to be so bad. Like, so bad. Because essentially what makes it really easy is if you were to unlock all the um, modifiers that ease the game, you could just bond through all the songs, spamming buttons, and win. All of them. And... <laughs> like, if you're looking for easy Platinums and that's your kind of thing, that's something you can look at the positive about them being separated. They both have separate Platinums. They are some of the e Like, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head that's easier than this is like the Walking Dead Telltale games. <laughs> Like, I don't know anything that's, like, remotely so easy. Uh, but those are my thoughts. Overall, though, I would recommend them if you're into music with them games, but perhaps not for full price. I think if they either went with $29.99 or $39.99, I think some of the criticism towards it being separate could be a little more lenient, but I still would just prefer them together. Anywho, those are my thoughts on that. If you feel like this video was helpful or taught you anything useful, please leave a like down below, and if you feel like this video didn't help you at all, please leave a dislike, and do not feel any guilt for it at all, for here at the Proving Grounds, in our backlogs, we just don't really care. <laughs> anyway, again, I hope everyone had a good New Year's, a good Christmas. Um, the year is looking like it's going to start off pretty good for us. And I am going to try and get more videos out more often on the main channel. I know for the last half year, last year was a little more lax on it because of real life things. So hopefully we can get some more things going this year. Anyway, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep praising the sun and enjoy.